Hi and welcome back. In this video, I want to identify all the controls on the Edit tab. So we're going to start at the top corner. I'm going to kind of just work our way through and see what's on the screen on the Edit tab. Now I will refer to keyboard shortcuts, and those keyboard shortcuts are based on the alternative key mapping under Settings, Keyboard Shortcuts, Reset Default, Use Alternative Traction Key Mapping. So if you want to follow along with the exact same keyboard shortcuts that I'm going to mention, then you want to set up your traction that way. Now starting in the very top left corner, this control opens and closes the browser. Our keyboard shortcut for that is B, simply B to open and close the browser. Browser is a great resource. On the Files tab of the browser, we can browse into any media, particularly WAV or audio files, drag them into the project. This is great for building things from loops. You can also put bookmarks in there, and you can also preview from there. So just to show you how that works, I'm going to go to my music hard drive, go into my loop library, and now this is kind of the top level of my loop library, and I can click here and bookmark the current folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now at any point, no matter where I am within this structure, I can just go here, jump right to my loop library. If I want to actually additional loop or drag it in, I'll just go into the TCA loop set here and pick one of these. Here's a loop. As soon as you click on it, it will play. If you have autoplay selected down here, you can also choose whether or not to loop the loop. There's another tab for loops. This is sort of a holdover from the older versions of Traction. I don't really use this view, but it is there and you can search through by keys. There's also a new presets folder that allows you to create presets. I primarily would use this related to racks, and we'll get into that later. Now the plugins tab on here allows you to search through your plugins. That would be virtual instruments and effects, and it is really, really effective. If I wanted to search for all my Waves plugins, I could just type in a few letters of the word Waves. If I wanted to search for my Renaissance compressor, I can type in R. Our comp, and there's a couple of versions of the Renaissance compressor. I also like to use Tone Boosters plugins in Traction. So if I type in TB, you can see it just filters it out, and I see those right away. Really great. Once you've got the one on here that you want to use, then you can just drag it over and drop it into the project. The Markers tab allows you to navigate by markers. There's also a view for the clipboard. Now the next thing on the screen is the timeline, and you can see that it's organized by bars. If I want to zoom out a little bit, I can right click on the time bar and choose zoom to fit. That will actually fit the whole edit within the range of the screen. You can see the keyboard shortcut for that is F5, so I'll just click that. You can see that I've now got all my bars are on the screen. If your song is not recorded to bars because it's a freely recorded song, then you could change this by right clicking and choose seconds and milliseconds. Or if you're working with film or video, you might want seconds and frames. I'm going to change it back to bars right now. Now in order to position along here, I showed you before that you can grab the cursor and move it around along the timeline. You can also hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC and click on the time bar to position the cursor anywhere along here. There's also some transport controls, such as the home key, which will take you to the beginning of the song, or the end key will take you to the end of it. Now, a really important thing you'll see here are the in point and the out point markers. These flags you can drag along the timeline to set the in and out point for your loop. They're also used for a variety of editing functions, as you'll see as we move through. They're also used for loop recording. You can also set them by just positioning the cursor wherever you want and then use the keyboard shortcut I to set the end point, and then you can use the keyboard shortcut O to set the out point. And then if you wanted to set the loop up over that, you can turn the loop on and off down here in the transport or use the keyboard shortcut L. Now as we continue moving along, the next thing you'll see over here is a clip object. This is a blank or empty clip, and if you drag it and drop it on a track like this, then you can insert a new MIDI clip, an audio clip, an edit clip or a step sequence clip. We'll be getting into those, but suppose you wanted to insert a blank MIDI clip, then you can just drop it in here and you'll get a blank MIDI clip like this. You can resize that. Another thing you can do is drop a plugin effect or any plugin into the section right here. This is the mixer section over here. So say we wanted to add an EQ right in here, we can drop this in 
right here exactly where we want it and then pick from say a four band equalizer and add that right in. Once we've added it in, if we changed our mind, we just hit the delete key on the keyboard and that will take that right back out. You can use this to also add virtual instruments and you'll see that as soon as you drop it, it asks you or gives you this list of things to choose from. Now before Traction 5, this concept was called a filter and you would this is the only way that you could put them in. Now with Traction 5, there's a variety of ways. One is we can drag them in from the browser. So if we wanted to add one of these plugins over here, we can drag it from the browser and drop it in like this. Or you can actually right click on any plugin that's already there and do add new plugin. And you can add a plugin and it will come in before the plugin that you just clicked on. So if I wanted to add, say, a chorus right there, I can also right click to add it. But the classic traditional traction way of doing this is to drag this filter, it used to be called the filter, but now called the plugin, anywhere here. Not only that, you can drag it right onto clip because traction supports clip level effects or plugins. So if I drop it here and I choose a plugin, then it will reside right at the clip level. As long as it's highlighted, if I hit backspace or delete, I can take it right back out. Now this area shows a number of things you could show or hide on the screen. For example, we have a tempo track. The tempo track comes up here. We can put our tempo changes in here to create songs that vary with the tempo. There's also a marker track. So this control shows and hides the marker track. You can also change the marker track view to include the bars and beats or the time code marker by using F10 to cycle through the different options. That's closed, that's with the marker track, and that's with the marker track showing both kinds of markers. This shows or hides the inputs. The inputs on each track represent what's coming in from your physical hardware. It could be MIDI hardware or audio hardware. Those are represented right here. If we wanted to take this bass line and bring it from our audio interface on channel one, which my microphone is currently hooked to. If you have these all set up and doing this and you don't want to see that, you can just hide those. Now the entire mixer area is this section of the arrangement right here. We can show or hide that right here. I have that configured as a keyboard shortcut M on the keyboard. So if you use M and B, then you can really extend the editing space that you've got on screen for working with your tracks and clips. So I'll turn the inputs back on. If you come back over here, you'll see this is the track header area. If we click within the track header area, anywhere in here on the name of the track or any of this space, it will open up the properties for that track. So if you wanted to rename a track, you'd click it right here and then come down into the properties. And if we wanted to say, make base capitalized, we just type it in there. You'll see that that quickly renames it. If we wanted to change the input, then you can click on this input section, choose the input here, it could be audio or MIDI. That also brings up all kinds of properties here for the inputs. The inputs have a really interesting object-oriented design as well. So if I have this input set up and now I've recorded something, I wanna quickly switch over and record on another track. I could just drag this input to the next track and it will copy it down there to the next track. Really, really kind of interesting and, and it's a fun way to work with traction. Within tracks, we have clips, either MIDI or audio clips. If you click on a clip, there's a clip body area which has the waveform. And if you drag within there, you can position the cursor. If you double click within there, you'll actually get a preview. It'll mute everything else and just play this one clip. And then if you click outside of that clip, it will stop that preview. If you double click on the header area, it will zoom it depending on your zoom setting like this, big and small. And then these have a variety of functions for stretching and trimming clips. But in general, you would grab here if you wanted to move this clip around within time. If you drag something or make a change you didn't really mean to, you can use Control Z to undo it, which is what I just did right there. Clips also have fade handles, so you can easily create fades. There's a lot more control over fades and everything about this clip down here in the properties section. We'll get to that in another video. If you did want to cut a clip, then there is a keyboard shortcut, which is the forward slash key that allows you to quickly cut or split a clip like that. So that allows you to cut it. 
this allows you to trim whichever clips are selected. If you want to deselect a selection of clips, use the escape key that deselects everything. So now I can take this particular one and trim it up, put in fades, that sort of thing. We'll get into all this audio and clip editing in later videos. And then this is the mixer area. We can actually rearrange any of the elements of this. We can even take like the volume and pan and put it ahead. This is how we do pre and post. You could put multiples of these volume and pans in here. Extremely flexible. Then you can drag right in this area to extend that out when you're really working on mixing. Sometimes I'll drag this out. You can also open and close the whole mixer area with the M key as I showed before. There's mute and solo controls for each track along here. Now the bottom part is called the controls panel. You can open and close that right here with this. I have this assigned to the keyboard shortcut F11, which will close that and open that. Sometimes it gives you a nice big view. If you look at this, we we'll also turn off the input meters and the mixer. We've got a really big, nice editing view. If I have the browser, the mixer, and this open, then Shift 11 will actually close all three of those things in one keyboard shortcut. You could assign that to something else if you'd like. But typically, I use B, M, and then F11 in order to control what I see on the screen. Now, coming down here, we have the menu option for timeline settings. This repeats mostly what you see if you right-click up here. Snap settings to turn snap on and off and some additional snap behaviors. And then quite a few options. We'll be getting into these, including scroll smoothly. Scroll smoothly keeps the cursor positioned in one spot and all of the waveforms scroll past it like this. I've already mentioned the property section here a couple of times, and then there's a transport section over here where we've got the ability to turn automation, read, write, on and off, all of our normal controls, including record. Now these controls here really work as a master two-track output. You can put additional plugins into this area right here. This is the controls for the loop. You can turn the click on and off. This is auto punch in and out for recording. You can turn that on or off. Auto lock locks automation to an individual clip. You can see here snap on and off. Snap is the keyboard shortcut Q, turn that on or off. The keyboard shortcut S, turns scroll on and off. C, turns click on and off. P, turns punch on and off. And L, turns the loop on and off. MIDI Learn allows you to sign the knobs and faders from your external MIDI controller to control things within traction. Then there's a button here for MIDI timecode. And with that, we have done a big overview of all the controls on the screen. We will, of course, break this down into the details as we get into the workflows for recording, editing, audio, and MIDI through the course of this series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.